Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, we're going to look at the NVIDIA Data Science Distro. This is a GitHub project. You can install this on any computer. However, I am using a Lenovo P53 that was kindly given to me for a couple of weeks to look at some of these neat technologies on my YouTube channel. Now, this is all open technology. You can put this onto any computer that you like. However, you have to go through all the installation processes. And if you're interested in seeing how to install any of these technologies, let me know in the comments and I might do a video in the future on that. So let's go ahead and install this. Now I will say a lot of these NVIDIA technologies, they're only available on Linux. So Linux was what's installed on this Lenovo P53. So this is quite useful. Now, if you are trying to run these on WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, this may or may not be working at this point. I know I've been trying to get Rapids installed, which is another NVIDIA technology on Windows subsystem for Linux. And there's issues still open where they're trying to resolve things that need to be fixed for it to work under WSL. Well, WSL is truly a Linux subsystem. There's obviously some differences there between Linux installed on bare metal, like, like we've got here with this computer. Now, the NVIDIA data science stack, like we're installing here, this is really meant for a GUI desktop Linux because it's going to launch a browser. You could pipe that browser through an EC2 instance or something like this, but for this, for this demonstration, I'm assuming that you're running desktop Linux. So let's go ahead and go to the GitHub repository that this is at. I'm gonna to go to the NVIDIA GitHub. I will put a direct link into the description of this video. It's pretty easy to find. I just usually search for science, as in data science, and the data science stack. This is the one that we're using. It's last been updated nine days ago, always a good sign. So this is an active project. It is Linux only. It's basically a bash script, most of the implementation. This is the file that really drives everything right here, just to show you kind of the structure of it. And like I said, this is a big old batch script that does a lot of things for you. It organizes your Docker images, it puts the drivers in, it really kind of terraforms your system. I tried installing this onto an EC2 instance that I set up and it pretty much put the driver in, got, got everything working right from a base Ubuntu install. So let's go ahead and clone this into a terminal window. I'm gonna go to code. I'm gonna get the HTTPS because I am not a committer on this, obviously. Let's go to terminal. And there we have our terminal. And I'm gonna put this just right into my user directory for now. You can always move it somewhere else later get clone and the HTTPS. Okay, now we've got it. I'm gonna follow the instructions here in the file. We're using Ubuntu, so this is actually pretty easy. There's a few extra steps on Red Hat Linux because it can't do all the security measures automatically. It will use sudo access, so it's going to ask you for that password. So we did the get clone already. The command actually doesn't work if you paste it directly in. That's it's better to get the actual URL right from the repository like I did. So obviously you change into that directory and then you just run this first part. Now before we actually run these commands, I am going to add the NVIDIA repositories to the security list, to the certificates list. I ran into this issue where I was getting an error very similar to this one, NVIDIA Docker signatures invalid. If you're getting your computer from an OEM like I did that had Linux pre-installed, this is probably going to be an issue because you might have an out-of-date version. They tend, 
OEMs tend to usually create sort of a standard image and then install that for the lifetime of a particular model. So this was a little, a little out of date. When you're looking at GitHub, you're always going to see these plus, well, you hope to see these lots of thumbs up. That usually means that this is the thing that's going to solve your problem. Uh, I'm not actually just blindly copying and pasted. This was probably about a half hour of research before I figured out how to fix this. But I will put a link to, and I'll put this command into the, actually I won't put the command in, these things, things may change, but I will put a link to this issue if you happen to run into the same command, or the same error. I was literally getting this, some index files failed to download, they may have been ignored, and an error occurred. Yeah, this line here, this is what I was getting, GPG error, because NVIDIA was not, at least at the time that my image was created, was not in that list. So you copy that, copy command, and then just paste it into here, and you just run it from your command line or terminal window. This is a pseudo level command, so they need that. All right, we're good to go. When you do things right in Linux, it's usually very short. It either says nothing or okay. So now let's move into that data science stack by NVIDIA. I am going to copy and paste this command. This sets up the environment for you. This does a lot. It sets up the drivers if needed. It makes sure that the NVIDIA driver on your system is at the right version. Also make sure that NVIDIA Docker is configured properly because this is going to run these Jupyter Notebooks all right from Docker images. So let's paste that into there. Due to Linux permissions, you do need to do that dot data science stack like that. Okay, it's installing. This takes a moment, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. All right. Oh, and I do want to mention that the data science stack was pre-installed on Lenovo, but it was an older version. It only supported up through TensorFlow 1. I forget exactly where, but I wanted TensorFlow 2 and beyond. This also supports PyTorch as well. Now, that's all been installed. The next thing that you need to do is they give you several options here. I went for running in a container. I like that. That's self-contained. You can get a list of the containers that are available and paste that there. There's the two. There's the data science stack, which is which has the latest of 1x of TensorFlow, and data science stack 2, which has TensorFlow 2. And then it also has a lot of other, namely PyTorch uh, and NVIDIA Rapids, both of them. So they really intend that you create your own environments, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But for now, and you pin the one that you're using. We'll get into that also in a moment. And we're going to get into that and we're going to build the container. That's going to build the Docker image and eventual container. Okay, we're gonna paste this and there it goes. This does take a little bit because it is setting up Docker images and everything else, downloading all of these files. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. I see XGBoost going through as the things that it's installing as well. So, I mean, they, they're putting in quite a few packages for you to be able to use in their data science stack. Now, they really do intend that you trim this down a bit and create your own environments. And we'll get to that momentarily. Fast forward as this thing continues to install. And there's PyTorch. Okay, it's done. Unfortunately, the GNOME recorder conked out on me while I was doing that. And unfortunately, when it stops recording, it just stops and doesn't tell you. So let me show you how to launch it. So let me change into the data science stack, just like I was before. And we're going to run under option one, we're going to run the container back to terminal, paste it. And it does give you a warning about make sure your machine is not exposed to the internet. By that, it means allowing inbound server connections to come to you because anything that can open a port on that 8888 can run code. So, I mean, if you've got open access to the internet to your ports, you've probably got bigger problems. You, that would mean you punched holes through your, through your firewall, which I've certainly done, but be careful. So now, Let's open a browser and we'll see that we have JupyterLab. Okay, we now have it successfully installed. We can open up a Python notebook. We can see that these environments, these libraries are now available to us. 
Now to get the newer version of TensorFlow, you need to pin that other environment. And the way that they describe doing that is if you go into here, which is the same environment we were, or the same repo that we were just at, the NVIDIA data science stack, if you go into environments, this is how you create the custom data science environments. You run data science stack pin. So let's have a look at that. I'm gonna break out of this and I'm gonna do run that, that bash command that is the heart of this whole system and list environments available. The default, so that's the one that's currently pinned. If you wanna use one of these others like I do, let's go to that one, copy it. So I hate to type and we'll do the data science stack pin paste that into there. Now it does have to build that additional environment that I'm now asking for. So this is not an instantaneous process. While it's doing that, let's go back to here and have a look at these. So these are the environments that they've given you. There's the, the standard TensorFlow 2 environment, and then I am making that the pinned one now. You'll go into the actual environment file itself. This is the one that you would be modifying. You would copy it somewhere else, and this is essentially the list of all of the stuff that makes up that, that environment. So they suggest creating something like foo.en V, you can then pin it. Now you would have copied it from another one most likely. And then you can create your own environment, which is the path I would recommend. Okay, it's still building that environment. We'll fast forward through that. This time I'm gonna keep an eye on GNOME and make sure it doesn't mysteriously quit recording. Okay, that's complete. Thank you for watching this video. And if you found this kind of thing interesting, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. I cover neural networks and all things AI.